guys, in this video, I'll be taking the cover off of this Brother Zig Neo Surger. This is the DZ1234, which I believe is the it's very similar, if not the same design, as the Brother Lock 1034D. Um, the issue I started having, my upper looper and lower looper clearance need to be adjusted. They are hitting into each other. So when you turn the wheel towards you, the upper looper can't, you know, unless you force it and possibly break the needle, the upper looper can't go past the lower looper and if you turn the wheel away from you in so to speak the wrong direction when the upper looper is coming down the lower looper is scraping against the entire side of the upper looper and then you hear um a clicking sound you know and that's the sound that i started hearing unfortunately with my surgery and i really like my surgery it encourages me to sew actually so i would like to see if i can get that fixed in this video however i want to take the cover off step by step and put it back on because i was running into quite a few issues in trying to get this section to the front here off um so i decided to put that in one video and then as i work my way through trying sorry to adjust that clearance i'll put that in a separate a separate video and hopefully if you have this exact design that will be helpful um like most people that own this machine only after i purchase it i you know i found out that they wouldn't service it um, I'm guessing the parts, you know, maybe it's not worth the money. Um, so that's unfortunate. So that's definitely something to take into consideration whether you're buying this one or the the 1034 d or any surgery as a matter of fact you know i would probably call around you know you live and you learn i'll probably call around first and find out if it's a serviceable machine but anyway so hopefully this video will be helpful all right so i'll start removing the simpler parts first so pop this off take off the presser foot and the needles I probably don't need to take off the needles since i am not working on the clearance between the loopers in this video but just for safety and i don't want to break them i'm going to take them off as well all right, so lift up the foot, press that to the back, push on that, and then take that. Needles, I'm gonna use the um, Allen wrench that came with the machine, put it in that little notch, oops, and take it out. All right, so now I'm going to work on this plate here. Now that um, plate has two screws. You only want to take off the flathead screw. The there is a tiny screw right here, and there's actually a piece of metal attached to the back. If it is you make a mistake and take it out, it will just drop in the inside of the machine. But if you didn't notice it, you'll be when you're trying to replace the plate. This will just, you know, continuously be turning because you need this part to the back here. So you only need to remove the flathead. I had someone donate a machine, a lock, um, 1034, yeah, 1034 D. And that's how I was able to figure out what was wrong with mine because I made a mistake and took it, take off my, um, my small screw. All right. So. Cause they didn't want to hassle with having to fix it all right so with this plate with my, at least with my plate i also need to take off this here now i'm not sure what this is called but it seems to be like some form of guard that sits between the lower and upper loopers all right and to take that off it has what looks like a brake pad right at the bottom here on that device there is a piece that sticks off that looks like a brake pad as well i'm going to press this here and it's just going to pop off it looks like this all right so where and you see the yellow arrow shows how to line it back up so you just press that pops off and if you wanted to put it back in you will just line back up the arrows right there Make sure that it's sticking between the loopers and it pops back in there. Alright, okay, so I'm just going to pop it back off. Oops. And now that would allow for my plate to come off.
I tried taking it off without taking out that piece and it just wasn't budging. All right. So now I'm going to work on taking off this section over here. So before I start taking off the rest of it, I want to point out all the different screws that we are taking out on this machine. So in total, nine screws come off, at least to, for what it is I'll be doing. We already took off the flathead screw. The other eight screws are Phillip heads. There are five short screws, one medium screw, and then two longer screws. All right, so if I turn the machine to the back, these two on top here will be coming off. One, two. Those are short screws together with this screw at the bottom here. That's also a short screw. The other two short screws one is here on this lever right in here and also at the bottom there so that'll give you your five short screws the two long screws one is in here and the other one is opposite this dough and this little shape here and lastly you have a medium screw at the back and I'll insert a picture to show the screws next to each other so now I'll work on taking them taking them out and if there's anything in particular that I wanted to point out as we try to work on um, getting the rest of the plastic off I will mention it as I go along all right so I'm gonna start with this little piece and work my way around This little piece, even though it's loose, the actual screw is still attached, so you have to turn it for quite a while. Then I'm going to take off the screw on this handle, bring it all the way forward. Now, I have taken this out before, so it's not as difficult to come out. Now, the first time it was, and what I found that was helpful was to start with a flat head bit, so even though it is um, a Phillip head screw, you know, get um, one that you have a good handle on, start with a flat head screw and then continue with a Phillips head. Or if it works, you know, with a Phillips head for you, well, then that's great. So just to show. And I want to be careful that I don't have the bit coming off of the um the screw head too much you know because you don't want to strip the um the screw it is in a awkward position All right, so even though the, all these screws are off of this piece, it actually can't come off until you take out the side screw and the screw to the back. All right, so now we can take off the side. 
so now I'm going to start working on this main body. So I need to open this to get to this. Screw in there. two screws and I'm just going to get these last two to the top there So now that we've gotten the last three screws out is to take this body off now this can be a little tricky you have to watch out for this piece here but also these plastic notches let's see if I can show you that the piece the main body part here it kind of lies behind um, some small pieces of plastic extrusions right so you will want to take maybe the flathead um, bit and gently, especially to the bottom, bring it in front of that, being careful not to break it, right? All right, so we're just going to try to work with that carefully. I'm gonna loosen it on top first. All right, I'm gonna put my finger through these. All right. So that's loose. And this piece here, be careful with that as well. So it does have a little bit of flex. There we go. All right. So just, you know, work with it, but it will be able to come off. And there we, we go. All right. So, so because I'm not actually fixing it in this video, I'm not going to go into that. I'm just going to go ahead and put back on the body now. All right. So when putting back on the main body, it goes on a lot faster and it came off once you get this side behind those two notches now on this side here you might have to kind of guide it back into place because there are some grooves on the plastic so you kind of have to guide it back into place and that's the main part so now it's just to put these screws back on there All right, so for the side, take this back off. I had put that on temporarily for to check something. All right, put that on first. There is a little, this little, I don't know if you can see that, this very slight cutout here kind of gets caught underneath this piece. So this piece has to go on first. And then from there, the rest of it is pretty um, straightforward. I'm going to put in this long screw. That's a long screw. This is a short screw. Put the bottom here. Another short screw. 
this is another short screw well, it will help if I'm turning the screw in the right direction all right <laughs> so I have that then I'm gonna put on close this and put on this little piece and this is another long screw So this little side piece, it's not that it's hard to put on, it's just, you know, just have to get it lined up properly. And then the last screw is at the back. And that, well, sorry, I still have the needle place and all of that to put on, but that's um, pretty straightforward. And this is a medium screw. So, put back on the last few pieces. First, I'll put on my needle plate, make sure that my feed dogs are as low as possible. Also, that my loopers are below the surface. Flip this side where you go. I'm going to slide that to place. I'm going to go ahead and line up my stitch finger, the yellow arrows. Sorry, I need to... Make sure that the, uh, this part is going to be going between the space where the loopers are. So I raised the loopers up so I can make sure that that is happening. Line that up, stick that in there. Put on the flat head. My needles, flat sides to the back. I'm gonna make sure that the slot for the needles are as high as possible and that my loopers are, are out of the way as much as possible. Then I'm using something flat to kind of help me get them up in there. Use the Allen wrench. Tighten them. And last thing, my presser foot. Put a little tiny bar under the little hook. And by pressing the little button to the back, it kind of goes in. It snaps into place. And that's it. Our machine is back together. All right, well, thank you very much for watching. Um, hopefully that is helpful in some way. Um, and I'll talk to you in another video. Bye.